You can cast a bait or lure at a fish and nothing happens. Or you can stand there holding a rod for a long time, waiting for a strike. In both examples, it doesn't mean that there is anything wrong with your offering. Fish are governed by feeding patterns and rest periods. They can only feed for reasonably short periods of time and then they must rest. This holds true for fish that swim continuously as well as those that can remain motionless. Swimming energy comes from glycogen, which is stored in the muscles. The supply is very limited and after a period of strong exertion, a fish must rest. You see this when you battle a fish and it turns on its side next to the boat. The supply of glycogen has been exhausted. Feeding extensively causes the same effect. Too many fishermen think that a fish feeds by swimming through a school of forage fish with its mouth open. That's not the case. In the feeding strategy of game fish, predators select and attack one specific victim at a time. Even when the prey is tightly schooled, the big fish try to focus on a single victim. They'll try to disrupt the school so that they can pick out a specific fish. Predators choose a victim that is isolated, disabled, or looks different. Fish on the fringes of a school are much easier to isolate than the shimmering, changing mass of the school itself. When you put a hook in a live bait, it behaves differently than a fish without a hook in it. This makes it easier for a predator to locate and isolate. Captain Butch Constable often breaks the tip of the tail on a bait, so it sounds differently and acts differently underwater. It doesn't take long to get a strike. Anything that looks different will attract attention. The lure that you just tossed into a school of bait fish may appear to imitate them, but to a fish, it will look different. As you retrieve it from the center of the school to the fringes, it becomes isolated and you can expect a strike. Remember that predators react to movement. The lure is pushing water, it's making noise, moving, it looks different, and it fills the requirements of the typical feeding strategy. Species such as bonefish have a slightly different feeding strategy. They swim over the bottom looking for tasty morsels. It isn't a matter of charging after escaping bait fish. Instead, they move and feed at a much slower pace. Each fish benefits from school behavior because they can find food easier and have a better chance of avoiding danger. Sailfish and white marlin often work in teams, herding schools of bait together in a process known as balling the bait. You can see their dorsal fins raised as they take turns swimming through the bait and feeding. In choosing a bait or lure, your first effort should approximate the size of the typical bait fish in the area. It should be large enough to attract attention, but small enough so that most fish can eat it easily. If that doesn't work, try a bait that's larger. That sometimes will trigger fish into feeding. Finally, go for a much smaller bait and see if that makes a difference. If a predator has a choice, it will select the largest prey that it can handle easily. Fish have the ability to judge instantly whether or not they can swallow something of a given size. Fish need food to grow. Just to stay alive, they have to eat about 1% of their body weight every day. Water temperature also plays a role in feeding. Fish are cold-blooded. They eat less when water temperatures drop because it takes longer to digest their food. And they can be somewhat sluggish, refusing to expend much energy to chase a bait. That's worth knowing when you try to catch a fish in chilly water. Fish are complex creatures of habit. Understanding their behavior patterns will make you a better fisherman. After all, there's no greater reward than watching the fish you want to catch swim up and eat your bait or lure.